I'm Tim Ellis, and thank you for joining us for Laneway Live. Tonight's special guest is not only a gentleman of deceit, but he's also the star of Melbourne's longest running magic show. Please welcome Luke Hocking. <laughs> Where are you at the moment? That looks very ominous, that location. This is my office, uh, you would say. It is, it is uh, it's a very enclosed echo space, but it's, um, yeah, it does the job, it does the job. You got like that and you got that. And we just moved here about three months ago. So we're still unpacking things. But um, yeah, it's, it's an office space. So you, um, your primary income now is derived as a, uh, a magician, obviously, but yes, in the show Impossible Occurrences, which I might add is Melbourne's longest running magic show in history. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. It's it probably it's been <laughs> five and a half years. Um, it would have been six years this July. So I do two shows a night every Friday night. So yeah, uh, that's my that was my main income. Uh, as is magic in general. So that's all sort of stock for now as it is for all of us. And you were saying you're, you're basically giving lots of refunds at the moment for all the cancelled shows. Yeah, so we give them, I think with most shows, it's a weird kind of balancing act, but it's offer them a refund if they want or an exchange if they, they want for a future date, which is also good. Um, but um, we also sell gift vouchers as well, which we sort of tend to say will extend their life as opposed to refund the gift vouchers. So, yes. So if you want to support Luke, you want to support Luke, get out there, Impossible Occurrences. We'll put the link down there and buy a gift voucher. Buy a gift voucher. When the show starts back, hopefully soon. <laughs> it uh, might be a while away until you come along to it, but hopefully. But thank you. But it is, a, it is a very unique show. And uh, perhaps you could explain to people who haven't seen it what it is. Oh, before, actually, before we do that, let's just have a look at your clip. So this is a magic show, but not what you think. You know that feeling you get when you just don't believe it? When something astonishing happens and you're right there, you get this warm feeling of wonder. For me, that's what it's all about. Take away the tackiness and the sequins and the Las Vegas girls, and you're left with something really cool, something you wouldn't have seen before. When you enter the show, it feels like you could almost be in someone's dining room or house. It's all very intimate and up close. You are a guest, and as you watch right there, these impossible occurrences begin to unfold. You can watch magic on TV or a big stage, but when you see it right there, inches from your eyes, there's nothing quite like it. It was awesome, really, really good. It was so yeah, it was amazing. Good fun. It was like mind blowing. Yeah. I'll definitely come back again. Fantastic, best show. It's Impossible Occurrences, Melbourne's exclusive magic show. So the show is quite unique in its setting. There's only four rows of chairs, each row is tiered, and it seats 60 guests. So it's that real intimate sort of up close sort of cabaret, old school sort of feel. And the, it's very interactive. There's no lighting or stage. It's all like a dining room almost sort of feel to it. And uh, it is the, you know, hop and serve Steve Cohen sort of pact of, of doing a regular show. Now there's, you know, so it's sort of in that same category, I guess, as style of show, but it's, uh, it's really fun because it's interactive and it's not, it's not that, that distance, huge sort of stage production. Which I think people, I think the appeal is, is the intimacy of it and, and uh, that kind of style and feel. Because you learn names, you know, people, you can point, you can see people, there's no darkness like on stage. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's, been, it's been five and a half years. I've done over 600 shows there, yeah. It's amazing because Melbourne is, relatively a small city on the scale of things but we have so much magic happening here oh sorry used to back in the day yes. so much magic happening here uh you had your show every week uh, illusionaire every week we had laneway theater shows magic at yep. the arts center uh slight night uh, what, there were so, so many shows happening for such a small proportion of people 
Absolutely. I think I think Melbourne's really uh, is or you know, well, it is the culture hub, I think, of Australia. And I think it kind of has a, that vibe to it. And I think it's, you know, you, we have the festival each year, obviously, as well, which is amazing. Uh, and I think it, it sort of tends to be, it's probably the, the prominent city of magic in, in Australia, I would imagine. Um, and yeah, it's just really great to see all this variety. You know, you've got Tim's show, you've got your show, of course, you've got Sam's show, you know, at the festival. So you get a lot of interest. I mean, even the festival is, is an amazing. People all hear about it and I, you know, people from my show from that. And it's just a, it's a great, it's a great uh, sort of way that we all kind of come up with, I think, with, with doing lots of shows. Mm. Yes. And uh, very soon we're going to have to decide whether or not we can go ahead in July. So stand by for announcements. That's right. Is it in April, you said, right? You're going to announce that? Yeah, April 13, we'll make the big announcement and see whether the festival will go ahead in any way, shape or form or simply like everything else, be postponed till next time. Yeah, yeah. Well, either way, it'll be the right choice. I'm sure you'll, you'll make But um, <laughs> Yes. But your show is quite unique because this is the thing I love. My show here in Laneway is, is like ultra close up. Uh, Sam and Rosanna do more a stage show. Yours is a parlor show. Can you explain yes. you know, what makes it so unique as a parlor show and, and why people flock to it? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's rated like number one on TripAdvisor, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, yes, it is. It is. Um, uh, hopefully it stays that way, but we'll see. Um, it, it, uh, I think it's unique because if you, I've changed it about two or three times. I sort of keep a third of the show the same and then two thirds of it, I sort of change over every probably 12 months, even 18 months. So it has gone through a few cycles. The bare bones of it have remained the same. And I try and do really unique effects or um, routines in the show that use parts of the room. And I utilize the way the audience is sitting, I think in regards to, to how they see things. There's a part of the show where um, the back two rows stand up and walk behind me, and watch things close up. So in that regard, it is quite unique. And it is only 50 or 60 people can fit in the space comfortably. Um, uh, and, and it is it is designed for that space. So I, I really can't do it easily elsewhere because it's really the materials designed. I do think with the light in the room, I do think with the mirror, and I do different things where I, I sort of utilize the space quite a lot. So it is quite unique in, in that regard. I love the fact that people can have dinner in a show so they can make it a whole evening. Yeah, the, the venue likes that a lot too, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> The dinner and show sells pretty well and they get a two course and wine and the show and it's a pretty good price point. So that's been going for, yeah, for most of the, the show time, it's been there for five years doing dinner and show. So yeah, it's a, it's definitely a fun night out. And number one on TripAdvisor in shows and concerts. If you look at it amongst attractions, I'm down there, down the list somewhere, near, the, near something else. But the shows and concerts is only about 60 or 70 shows, I think, in Melbourne. So I'm, I'm number one currently for that. Cool. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, but also, um, you didn't, you know, that's, that's not your only thing. As you said, you do corporate events and stuff, but you also are renowned as one of the gentlemen of deceit. Ah, yes. Yes, I, yes, I am. Um, gentlemen of deceit. So my good friends, Vyom Sharma, who's uh, actually been in the media quite a lot recently with this virus as a GP, which is his profession. And Alex Della and Bellia, who's the both good friends of mine. And, and we formed this trio in 20, I want to say 2011, 2011, we started, started to do shows at the Adelaide Fringe and Melbourne Comedy Festival. And we sort of did one each year. And then in 2016, we got onto Australia's Got Talent and did kind of okay from that and got through to uh, the grand final, I guess. And then got sort of, then, then, then didn't get further. And from that, we kind of did a lot of good, uh, good stuff. I think we went overseas quite a bit and did some good magic did a show at the Opera House off the back of that, and we did a show at the Athenaeum on that as well. So we had, I guess, some success in terms of just doing shows and getting momentum from what is a really um, highly debated platform. If you go on that kind of show, is it going to go well for you? Is it not? You know, that platform, I think, is really debated. Magicians are always, oh, you know, should you go on it? Are they going to be nice to you? And we went on, recently, we went on uh, America's Got Talent. We were on there the nice time. To you. <laughs> like, oh, look, 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 it was fine, I guess. Um, if you get Dom Chambers on the show, I'm sure he'll tell you a lot about his experience. Because we were there at the same time he was, and Dom did very well. 
um, we we did it. Uh, we did an act, and it, it was buzzed by some, and then we got three yeses, and it just it just didn't flow very well. But oh, not nice enough to us. But um, it was a very interesting experience to do America's Got Talent compared to Australia. It was a real. It was almost like uh, yeah, it was it was a different different kind of thing completely. Yeah, they they had uh, a huge budget. I think in America and I think Australia for us anyway. There was there was no budget. <laughs> I don't think for us, but. Um, well, like, that was a very fun experience and I would recommend do it if it comes back next year and this is all over. I think it can be a really good platform. Look at, look at Shim Lim, look at Dom, look at other guys that have done it and done well out of it. You know, it, it is a risk, it is a gamble, but if you do it the right way and have something that's going to go viral, usually it's your, uh, your opening act. So we had this thing with um, tape on our face um, with the shoe thing that we did back, uh, quite some time ago and we did that in 2016 when we auditioned. And that went pretty well for us online. It went kind of viral on YouTube and Facebook, which is cool. Um, and you find the other acts that we did that we put a lot more work into didn't go viral. They just kind of have a few views and no one really cares. So usually if you're going to go on it, I think do something really original and unique. And that, that is going to just get a great reaction. It involves the judges if you can, because they want to be on TV. Um, and, uh, and that's your best chance to, I think, have success out of out of that yeah now your second act was a, a very complex prediction act second act we did on got talent you mean yeah yeah so we did this is the second act we did was the, we borrowed kelly osborne's phone and it went into a can of baked beans all right and we predicted uh i think a word from um dicky one of the hosts um so that wasn't um that was okay. That was a very convoluted setup. If you watch um, the audition of the, sorry, the second round of that, you'll see this, how, uh, how convoluted that is. If you're a magician and you look at that, you'll, you'll, you'll think about the effort that went into to, to make that happen, to get that phone in that can live on stage. Um, that was the second one. And the third one, we, we, we did a prediction, yes, of That's a one. lottery ticket. And we also made an ice cream truck appear on stage. Uh, and that was fun. And we used our friend um, Sam Powers, who's also on, on this forum. Uh, he's a great guy and he really helped us out with that. And he's, he's the guy that knew how to do that best. So we used him for that and he really helped us uh, make the truck appear. And it was so funny because we're all quite inexperienced with big illusions. So we thought we should get the best guy that we think was great at this one particular effect. And um, yeah, and it was the funniest thing to, to do that live on stage and, and how in rehearsal, it didn't look great. It was really not the best. And then just we had to just do it and go and uh, go for it. And, uh, and it worked out okay and it appeared. It looked really good on camera. It was, it was just about 10 seconds, you know, like off from not looking great <laughs> from what I hear. But, but uh, it worked out okay for us and that went pretty well. Did you find when you did your America's Got Talent, there were a lot of uh, negative comments in the YouTube clips? Oh, so ours never aired. We didn't go to air. Um, so we never got published on YouTube, that kind of stuff. For Australia's Got Talent, there's a lot of, if you watch our YouTube um, clip of our audition, there's a lot of funny comments about, yeah. about that. And uh, people uh, really didn't like the tape thing. That was tape face. And truth is, we've done that routine before that was even a thing that yeah. we can't say. Like, it's just, you know, what it is, unfortunately, but there's, there's a lot of flack on, I think any magician now on YouTube that does anything is, is gonna get a reveal video and is gonna get a lot of flack, which just kind of comes with the, it's the nature of the beast, unfortunately. All the armchair experts, I love the theories and they're so yeah. definite that, you know, it was a camera trick, that wasn't her phone, it was a duplicate, they rearranged it, this is rubbish, zero, thumbs down. Oh yeah, I know, right? Yeah, they're all experts, they're all experts. But um, that, if they actually knew, and we can't discuss it, but if they actually knew how hard it was to get that phone into the can, because you do it live oh, on stage. Oh, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. Um, so, yeah, it was all live on stage, and it was her phone in the can. Um, and it was just, that was a real, uh, a real fun trick to do. And it was very convoluted and, and very difficult. And even in America, we use a similar method for, for our routine where we borrowed... Um, Howie Mandel's phone, we destroyed it and made a repeat in a watermelon, which is which is what which, which was the effect we did. And as I said, that never went to air. But we're very proud of the method. It was very complicated as well. 
and to get all that shipped over there and to get the melons. We were in Pasadena <laughs> trying to find melons from all the grocers. We were getting in taxis and they were gonna, it, was, it was insane. Um, that experience, but uh, a really fun, a really fun time. And, and uh, before you did all this, and I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll edit this out. <laughs> okay. You, you were in a, in another group, another famous magic group called the Delusionists. Oh God, yes, um, yes. Uh, look, uh, I wouldn't say famous. Um, so we got so Simon Corrett. So I was doing a show or something. Oh, it was at the Swiss Club in Melbourne at uh, one of the venues we use in Melbourne for shows and stuff. Not anymore, but we used to. And we decided to do a show where um, I was doing a kid's show, I think, the weekend from memory. And I had one night free. And I called some people and said, hey, we should do a show that night. Simon Coronel had the idea of calling it The Delusionists. At that time, The Illusionists, Simon Painter's production, was touring in Melbourne. And I'm like, oh, great. So I made up a flyer, uh, like a poster, um, just for, like a fun thing to do. And I sent it through to Simon and Simon's like, that's what we're going to use. And it's like, a, it's a horrible, obviously, you know, a bad on purpose looking thing. And then we use that. And then we got sent a cease and desist letter from uh, the illusionist to say, stop doing this, <laughs> which was hilarious. And we said, okay, no worries. Um, that was, that was fun. Audience in the Swiss club. <laughs> I don't think we were. I think, I think they all knew what we were doing. <laughs> But uh, that was a good fun time. That was fun. That was fun. I think now it's worth talking about just um, um, uh, what magicians are doing. I think, I mean, personally, when it comes to what's happened, we've got a lot of downtime. Yeah. And I'm listening to podcasts a lot. I find yeah. them pretty cool. I'm not sure if you do that, but uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. And if you don't listen to them, uh, I'm listening to uh, a guy named Richard Young has the Magicians podcast. Yep. He interviews, it's sort of stopped now, but he interviewed everyone big names like his last one was Copperfield he yeah. did I think last year and he's a really good interviewer and does a really good uh, hour interview and it's, it's a really uh, I recommend that highly if you haven't heard that already for anyone who wants more content on magic and also um, Simon Coronel has got one called Two Magicians One Mic yes. which is uh, uh, Nick Paul and Simon do, do that which is actually pretty good his recent one was about, uh, they've got a thing called the, uh, the Quarantine Sessions um, where he's interviewing people each each week or month, whatever it is. And he got John, John Armstrong on recently. And John was stuck on a cruise ship, the Disney cruises that he does, and was stuck on there for an extra week. And it's quite a good story about how that all came about. So I listened to that today, and that was quite quite good. So content-wise, it's it's uh, it's hard to find things to do sometimes, but but um, uh, it's only been a week. <laughs> so, so, so I'm just trying to, trying to find things to do and be creative and, and, and look at magical Look at things that you know you haven't looked at for a long time, or those tricks you bought that you never thought you know, you've never used, and you open up and have a go at them. And I find that's kind of that kind of is helpful. But it's it's um uh, yeah, it's it's strange times to be a magician right now. I think it's a very strange time. It is. It's a time of creativity. We yes. Are enforced creativity. Another good podcast, the Shazam podcast with Carissa and Kayla. Oh, yes, yes. I've heard of that. I haven't listened to much of that. That's quite good, though. I think they're up to... They've done a lot of episodes. They've, they've oh, wow. I should get up to about it. About two years of backlog. So it's, it's oh, wow. Like, okay. Well, that's, that's, that's me gone for a week. <laughs> um, also, I, the Penguin Lectures and the At The Table Lectures, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Like, Time to catch goodness. up. Um, sorry, say again? Time to catch up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, a lot of stuff to, and it's only it's pretty cheap to to to, uh, to subscribe to them. Uh, there's lots of good stuff, you know, lots of good lectures, lots of good talks. Um, so we are. If we didn't have the internet right now, in what's happening, I think it would be a lot harder. Absolutely. So we're kind of lucky in that sense to have it. I think it's, it's, it's the funny thing because our, our parents are always like, you know, I'll turn the internet off and just go out and talk to somebody, and that's like, we can't. We can't. No. We have to talk like this now yeah it's yeah the way the world it's, is it's uh, it's crazy have you uh have you uh, been working on anything you'd like to show us any uh, any little snippets of magic uh, look, no, yeah uh, look not really this is so this is what i said so I, I was looking through a big case of stuff that i bought oh that like just tricks that you buy and you just top drawer and you i'll do it one day and today is the day you know oh, <laughs> um, we're lucky yeah, I don't know about that. If you're lucky or not. So, uh, what's the, look? I'll give it a crack. I'll give it right. a crack. Uh, I learned this a little like a day or two ago. So it's just um, 
Uh, so it's an observation test. Let me stand. I should I stand? Maybe not now. So make sure we all good to go. Uh, so observation test. Yep. Uh, so we have uh, five cards. There's the backs. There's the front. Let me give and you. And the first question of the test is how many cards were there in total? You would say five, which is correct. Second uh, question is what was the fifth card? And you would say it's blank. It's not, it's the ace of spades. And next question is what color was the backs of the cards? If you said blue, you'd be wrong. They are in fact red. If you missed that, you may miss the royal flush. Which is a nice, nice trick. Oh, thank you. Hold the applause. Oh, you were. A nice trick by um, Eric Casey uh, called the poker test. And I bought that six years ago. <laughs> it's the first time you've done it. The first time I've done it. <laughs> the first time I've done it. I thought it'd be great in roving and, you know, but uh, never got around to it. We, we all have cupboards and cupboards and cupboards of tricks. So I'll, uh, I'll have to show everyone my cupboards one day. There's so many like shelves and drawers and boxes of, of tricks, many of them still unopened. And so this is yes. the time to uh, delve through the tricks and have a look. And I think a lot of people are going to come out of this whole uh, hibernation, as we could call it, with brand new shows. I think so. I mean, if you want to do magic right now, now's the time to do it and learn new things. And there's a great saying by Michael Lamar in his book um, about being the best at something in the world. So picking one thing and you've got all the time in the world. If you're a professional magician right now and not working, hopefully you're okay financially and you're getting you know, support. But if you've got that, like you can do, you can be, you can have the best pass right now in the world. Like you've got six months to smash it out if you wanted to. Or the best whatever it might be um so i think that's a good that, 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 that's a good thing to think about just looking leaning towards your strengths that are, that are that are good and i always enjoy looking for inspiration you know with like think about i mean um uh Dorito gordio's show like that guy he, he's sure i haven't seen it but i've heard all about it and some of the things he was doing it's just an inspirational thing you just think man he's, he's just he's just next level stuff and that was not even magic show even Dan White in New York's got a really cool show and some really cool ideas in it. And you look at look at material like that, and, and it just I just find it even now I just find it quite inspirational. So if you if if you look, just play with things that you like, and spend some time on things you want to do and play with. And I think that's a good use of time. And you know you don't want to be fatigued by it. You don't want to sit down for 20 hours each day and do it each day because you just might hate it at the end of it. But if you just have a, a couple of hours a day doing some stuff, playing some things. I think that's a good approach to take and it just sort of makes it light and fun and you aren't forced to do anything you know um, um one quick thing which i think i just like to play with and this is a trick that i never do this is off a lecture that i saw recently on penguin once again just being last couple of days um uh, let me sh uh, so you have a ordinary red silk and tie a knot the knot comes straight off um, so this is a, I think, I think that's it. Uh, this is, um, off a Jeff McBride lecture called Knots Off Silk. And it's, I think he calls it Becco's, uh, best ever Knots Off Silk routine. Um, and it's, it's a really, I don't know if you saw that well or not, but it's a really, I just, that's sort of stuff where you see a little gem, a little bit of gold and go, wow, that's really cool. Um, and, uh, uh, that's basically, it looks like a really nice knot that just slides right off. And although it's an old routine, I think he's got some new work on it or he's got, he's got some new stuff on it that he's done. And personally, I've never been a big fan of Jeff McBride personally, although he's a great performer, not for me, but recently I've loved his stuff, <laughs> you know, and, and I never did initially. So he's uh, got some cool stuff out there and, and a lot of good something, to, to That's use. something that would uh, fit very nicely into your show because the people can, can see so close, they can touch the silk, they can touch the knot, they can experience it up close in that impossible occurrence situation. Possibly, yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's uh, he says it's yeah, it's uh, for you know, a big stage show even as well, but even close up or, or for cabaret or parlor, definitely, definitely could uh, could be a could be a good trick. Uh, I think his idea was he's got three phases, and then at the end you show the silk and there's three holes in there, which is I don't know, it's okay, but I think there could be a better ending somewhere there maybe. But uh, it's I think the actual effect of the slide is very is very nice. Yeah, it's a, it looks lovely. The, uh, the good thing is that there are 
maybe 10 or 15 versions of that all out, around already yeah, with, yeah. with different twists to it. And, and it's, it's so nice because you don't want to, the audience to be watching the same trick done by the same performers and you know, just right. the same way all the time. And, and one of the things you were talking about, uh, looking at different shows, looking at different ways to perform, I think during this time of hibernation, we can sit back and not just watch magic shows, but watch other shows and other forms of entertainment, other types of art, even Netflix shows, and be inspired yes. to take our magic in a completely different way. Because the power of the magic, I think, is not just the tricks, but the storytelling that goes with the tricks and the stories that you can get across, the emotions you can carry across. So is there, is there something else you like to watch, some, some sort of inspiration that, that uh, is not magic, that, that gets your juices flowing? Um, I love I love series on I love crime podcasts I like those a lot um, Netflix I I like anything uh, I like documentaries on Netflix I watched quite a few of those recently um, uh, but uh, uh, good movies I was really looking forward to, I like thrillers and horror I was looking forward to seeing the second uh, um, A Quiet Place Part Two which is a new horror film coming out soon uh, that is now being postponed with yeah. everything. Um, that, that those are really good. This is well directed films. I love Parasite, for example. That was a thr oh, thriller. I think you could say that was. I called that like last year. I said to Fred, "But you, you got this is a great film. Um, that's an amazing film." I thought. Um, uh, and I, I, I've been reading um, the Tattooist of Auschwitz, which is you know, when in hibernation, you know, you should read about the Holocaust. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> Makes you um, feel better. <laughs> absolutely. It could be worse. <laughs> Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I think anything like that is, is good. Netflix has some great stuff. You know, sometimes it's when you think, what's on, what's, you know, is there anything good? Lots of good stuff on there. And Stan as well has, has some good stuff as well. Um, have, have you been watching anything recently, Tim? Well, the, the sort of thing I, I watch, I, look, I like a lot of the twisted superhero tales like The Boys and uh, Raising yeah. Theon, where they take a genre that we're all familiar with and twist it on its head. And that's what I like to see people do with magic as well. You mentioned Derek Delgadio's show in and of itself. It was a show yes. that twisted magic and it turned it around. And it was a magic show, but it wasn't a magic show because it was something yes. unique. You look at Darren Brown and the way he's combined mentalism and psychological illusions and hypnosis and sleight of hand and created a whole new genre. Uh, this, is, this is the sort of thing that interests me most, somehow being able to take what we do and change it. Now, there's nothing... Nothing against the classic magic that everybody does. The classic magic is always going to have a place. But, you know, we're not a one-note art form. There are so many different ways we can, we can go. There's so many different paths we can journey on. And the more people start to hack their own way through the long grass and create their own unique paths, I think magic can just grow so exponentially. So I hope that's what we're doing. I think it's going to be a f in, uh, when this all ends which it will you know i think we're all going to come out and probably just have amazing new material or as you say new shows because we had to we have no choice but to you know to, to think about new things and be original and, and come with new routines so i guess kind of enjoy it while it lasts if you can um that's kind of a nice thing but i think i think you're right there's lots of different takes on it and now is the best time to look at those takes on it and see what you know what you can do with your magic. Um, I was going to say, I, I think if you're if anyone's feeling down about this, which I think we all are in some ways, it's all very new. But I think we are all in the same boat, and you know we're you know, Copperfield in the same boat. He can't sell tickets to his show, you know. So is Penn and Teller, and so is everyone here. And you know, I think take some comfort in knowing that. I think that that it's. We're all in, in this together in the industry, and uh, you know, it, it, it's um, this kind of. It sounds a bit weird to say, but it's kind of not exciting. But um, I think anticipation to see what's going to happen with this and how this is going to take magic, where it can be, if if it's going to be this for the next you know short while, or if it if it can be live you know soon, hopefully. I think it's kind of um, you know a, an, an exciting time to see what's going to happen with magic um, in this kind of environment. We are living through history right now. We're living through it all together. And I uh, thank you for joining me and being a part of this historic moment. <laughs> My pleasure. Good to speak to you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.